for our industry keynote on ethical framework for responsible AI. We've got Virginie Martin, the member of EU Alliance Ethical AI and an SDG expert. Well, with 15 years of expertise in strategic content and advisory, Virginie has acquired an expertise in AI and innovation towards sustainable development goals with a focus on social, gender bias, and ethical concerns. Thank you so much, Virginie, for joining us and being a part of the World AI Show, the India edition today. Over to you. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. I am delighted to be here uh, and to this event that is hosted by India. We had had some very interesting conversation this morning, and my predecessor, uh, coming from the government, has given you a broad overview of what is the national strategy uh, in India regarding human concerns and also ethical concerns. Uh, I'm going to present a topic around ethics, and I'm going to share a video with you. Uh, so here, and in the meantime, I'm going to switch off. Uh, my computer. Okay. So today I would like to talk about, uh, let me maybe switch of that. Yeah. So today I would like to talk with you about ethics and, and human rights, adopting a lean approach uh, and a lean methodology to make ethics a bit more practical uh, when it comes to implementing within your organizations. Uh, so we would like to discuss with you and give you an overview of what are the broad ethical concerns with AI and how to tackle them from a company uh, perspective. Yes. So as you can see here, since 1956, and especially since 2018, there have been an exponential increase of AI applications, and especially also a rise in ethical concerns and ethical breaches. As you can see here, we have had different problems, and the latest one being in 2018 with the Cambridge Analytical scandals. At the same time that the evolutions of AI have uh, have developed exponentially and that in parallel, the ethical concerns have developed. We have also had an evolution in four different waves of the different ethical frameworks and the different ethical guidelines that I would like to underline here for you. The first wave, I would say, is the Asimov laws of robotics, which dated back, dated back from 19th century, but are still very relevant today. Why? Because from a corporate point of view and a government point of view, there are structure around four main questions that really structure your thinking and your design process when you, talk, when you think about AI and ethics, and you would like to really implement it stage by stage within your corporation. The second wave around ethical principles that you can apply to AI is the 1945s and onwards documentation and instrument from the UN. Yes, it's very centered on human rights, but it's still very applicable. Why? Because it's universal and therefore it is applicable to all sectors, to all clients, to all customers, and that's the basis of the reasoning today that we applied around the AI. The third wave was uh, launched in 2009, which was the first smart initiatives between public and private uh, companies, with some enterprise coming from 500 companies, but also the GAFAM with the UN, trying to develop a set of guidelines really directed to AI application with a focus on the SDGs. Both have innovation principles dated from 2009 were updated in 2019 and are also a good benchmark if you are trying to implement AI with a very strong focus on the SDGs. They brought you through the journey from the ideation process to the implementation process with really the thinking around the ethical principles and the human rights principles and try to make them as operationalized as possible. The fourth wave started in 2017, where all the governments worldwide, starting by the UK, the US, and China, and also India in 2018, decided to issue the national strategy around AI and really incorporating ethical concerns. It also, at the same time, did correspond to the moment where most of the companies did implement also the ethical codes. And to date, in 2020, we have around 250 ethical codes uh, by companies and issued by companies. Basically, what it does mean for you in terms of ethical concerns, to date in 2020, I think there is a large consensus about the main AI application, whether for the corporate world, but also for the public sector, being the biometric recognition, but also the contact tracing, which we have seen that has developed through the COVID-19, but also blockchain in finance and, and uh, insurance. 
Related to both applications, there is also a large consensus of the major ethical concerns and human rights concerns, being the security, the freedom of movement when it's related to application to track people during the COVID, but also the problem of transparency of uh, the black boxes, the problem of privacy, uh, and uh, the problem of accountability. Those three different pillars are also reflected into the Indian national strategy in 2018. Another ethical risk that I would like to point out to you, especially for the people working in banking uh, and in insurance, which I think is uh, some corporate today, is the social rating and the scaling problem. I think it's not yet addressed from an ethical point of view, but it will trigger a lot of conversation, especially when you're going to implement them in different countries. It's already the case that some applications are tracking and scoring citizens. It is the case, for example, in the U.S. with the insurance sector. And it's also the case in, in China. But in different and other countries, like in Europe, for example, and possibly also in India, it's not really the culture. So some companies will have to adapt their processes and their application to the market where they're going to spread out their technologies. And this needs to really be taken into consideration by corporations. So basically, also, when you talk about ethical AI and to make it very pragmatic for you, I think there are three layers when you talk and you think about your applications. There are the general AI applications where it can be developed before the ethical conversation was becoming so high and there was such a high momentum where you don't really have a focus on what are the implications. But with this, I would say, is the old school. It's not happening anymore. There is another layer where you really have a focus on what are the impact for society, for my consumers, for my clients, and that's what we call ethical and responsible AI. And within this group, you have also a narrower group of applications which are AI for good, when your social economic approach is more intense. Here also, I wanted to give you a very pragmatic approach to banking. So I would say that general AI application when it comes to ethical and responsible AI are, for example, the predictive algorithms that you use in stock markets and in stock exchange rules, where, tra sorry, where traders don't really have the end on the models and they don't really know about the algorithm which are developed by designers and coders. But the impact on the market and also on the end consumer on the finance financing line is huge. On the opposite side of the spectrum, you have the blockchain that is used for refugees, but also for poor people who are outside the global economy and to reintegrate them from the black economy to the general economy. So that's where you can see that with the same application, you can really have a different ethical and human rights approach to it, depending on the social impact you would like to have on your applications. So that said, I would say that in 2020, it's not even about do we need and what is ethical AI? It's how to do it. And again, to make it a bit pragmatic, because human rights need to be operationalized and because human rights are everywhere, we need to take a bit of business approach when we are working within companies or for companies. And for that, I thought that the Lean method was quite interesting for you, and especially two main principles. So the first principle is the standardization of core principles to ensure a continuous flow on the development of your application, your services, your products, and your AI applications, and the scaling up of them. For that, I would say that it coincides with the development of an ethical corporate strategy or an ethical guidelines and handbook. The second principle, when you are thinking about the Lean method and you are trying to implement an ethical strategy and an ethical framework within your company, is also trying to see what, how can I improve the business culture? How can I raise capacity in my, in, my, in my company and how to continue to improve that? And that's why I put here this short model where, ethic, like in any products, edit is also about building a framework, learning by applying it to a, pro, a product or an application, adjusting it depending on the application and depending on the feedbacks received by your customers, your clients, but also your data engineers, your legal practitioners, your marketing and your top CEOs. So this is an iterative process that doesn't need to stop, but should be always reviewed with the development of your applications. Improve the business culture starts also from within by training and having a chain of accountability within your corporation. So who is involved, who is in charge, from the data engineers to the legal practitioners, to the project managers, and also from the governance level. Really trying to create this bubble of creativity within your company from the ideation stage to the scaling up of the products. And therefore, all stakeholders are in this process and can, re uh, can think about it together. 
I would like also to underline four of the main principles when it comes to ethics and related to business management, which make make sense for you from a corporate perspective again. First, stewardship are very important. Where, where is your stand in terms of corporate social responsibility? What do you want for your company? And what do your top leaders want? Because influential leaders make an impact within the organization. Also, try to have diverse teams. As we have also seen in the previous slide, one of the important uh, aspects of ethics when it comes to AI is bias. So if you have a diverse team that reflects, that brainstorms, then you have more chances to tackle from the very beginning of the process the bias in coding, in algorithm. It's a necessity, but it's not enough. You need to go further and really challenge and really enable people to share their views about ethics, what diversity means for them, and what the application they would like to develop for the country or the company. Other also important is to have a clear stand of what is your benchmark in terms of core ethical and human rights principles. As I have also underlined before, for India, it's transparency, it's also biases, and it's privacy. What is it for your company and for your clients? What is the core principle that you would like to be embedded in everything you do? It can be one or two. I will suggest a minimum of three, but it doesn't need to be all of the ethical principle, but at least the three that will make a difference for your clients, for your customers, and for the market and the sector and the country in which you operate. So I would say that if you look at all those different, I would say, benchmark and, and checklist within a corporation, it will coincide with the three different layers when you talk about and when you think about ethical frameworks. First, and that coincide also with the global governance. So the first macro level, I would say, coincide with the UN and the EU international guidelines, where there's the innovation principle, EU GDPR, but also all the major ethical frameworks. That will correspond from a corporate level to your corporate strategy and to your ethical assessments. The second layer, sorry, the second layer is a more, I would say, customized approach where you really take into consideration the diversity of your market, of your region, but also your department. So try to really have, I would say, operationalized ethical guidelines and try to tailor make them according to the culture of your company, to the culture of the department, and more specifically, to the culture of the region and the country you do operate. And that's where also the factor of gender, of diversity, all those different markers that are used by government officials might be incorporated into your, uh, your code of ethics. So therefore, you are always in contact with the main decision makers and political leaders within your country. The third layer, I would say, is the micro level, and it goes back to what are my core values, what are my core ethical principles within this corporation, and those can change. I have put here, for example, uh, Google. Google was not known for being the leader and the champion of privacy. But over the years, and because all the regulation is coming into place, they realize that it's important for the customers, for the citizen, because each customer is also a citizen. And now they are trying to be the champion of privacy and to really embody this ethical principle. So what is yours? What do you want to implement and embody within your company? And make it really very operationalized and then use the legal practitioners or strategies or it ethicists in AI to link that to human rights principle and therefore better market your CSR positioning on the market. So to conclude, I will say that we all know uh, that the fourth um, revolution is led by AI, but much more than a revolution, I think it's a deep, profound transformation of society. And to be very straightforward and hands on when it comes to applic uh, app uh, app 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 applicate, sorry, AI and ethical guidelines, you need to think globally and act locally. Try as much as possible to have those different layers from corporate level to department level of this approach to ethics and make it as customized and as operationalized as possible. Always think about AI as crossing borders, crossing, uh, crossing the boundaries of sectors, of areas of expertise. And so try to incorporate into that smart interconnectivities with multicularity, with gender, with a different scope of perspective from different professionals. And thirdly, which is even more innovative, we don't want technology per se, as we have seen with the different panels, it's about technology for social impact, technology for the sustainable development goals, and really trying to have this shift of paradigm to make sustainable profits, and really combining the profits and the benefits with what is the social impact for the population. Because as the Indian strategy has put it out in 2018, it 
it's about AI for all and not only for few. Thank you for uh, listening to me. And I, I hope this presentation was helpful, helpful in making the parallel between what could be a corporate strategy and what are human rights and ethical benchmarks and guidelines. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much, Virginie, for joining us and being a part of our World AI Show, the India edition. Thank you once again for your time. Thank you.